Let's now revisit the same types of uh, terms that we looked at for the hydrogen atom, but now generalize that to general atomic term symbols. So we've got uh, three angular momentum quantities here, uh, quantum numbers. We've got our capital S, which is going to be our total spin angular momentum for our entire atom. All of these are going to be capital letters because they're going to represent uh, the value for the entire atom and the aggregate of all of its electrons. So S being the spin angular momentum, the spin of the electrons, total sum of all the spins. L, capital L being the orbital angular momentum and capital J being the total angular momentum. <clears throat> and again, uh, the spin and the orbital angular momentum couple together because of spin orbit coupling. Uh, and that is an effect that comes out of relativity. Okay, so S, <clears throat> just like little s, which we would have for a single electron, also has a component in the z direction called m sub s and the value of m sub s is restricted based off of the value of s to be uh, anywhere between s and minus s and they the sum of those two would have to be an integer so if s is for example one then m sub s could be one zero and minus one if s is one half m sub s can be plus one half and minus one half s can be any half integer value so that gives you uh, two s plus one values of m sub s similarly l has just integer values l can be zero one two three etc starting at zero and going up and then you're going to have two L plus one values of M sub L, which are similarly going to go from L to minus L in terms of all integers in between. So if L is two, we would have five values of M sub L, two, one, zero, minus one, and minus two. That works very similar to how the quantity little l would work for a single orbital or a single electron. And then J is going to work the same way. J is going to be able to have uh, half integer values as well and then has two J plus one possible values of M sub J going from J to minus J decreasing by an integer every time. Then the values of J which are allowed based on the values of L and S are that J has to be somewhere between the sum L plus S and the absolute value of the difference L minus S. And again, all S, L, and J all have to be greater than or equal to zero. The big S, big L, and big J. Okay, <clears throat> so that gives us what I said here. We have S is either going to be integer or half integer values. L is going to be integer values. And these integer values are going to be represented by um, this capital S, capital P, capital D, etc. The same types of letters that we used for individual orbitals, but now capital letters. And same thing with J. J is going to be um, either integer or half integer values, depending on what the value of S and L is. And again, uh, these are all going to be capital letters when you're referring to entire atoms. Okay, so then this leads us into atomic term symbols. So in our term symbol, we're going to have a superscript on the left, <clears throat> whose value is going to be 2S plus 1. Then we're going to have a value, we're going to have a letter, which is going to be the value of L in terms of S, P, D, etc. And then we're going to have a subscript on the right, which is going to be J. And this thing is going to be our total term symbol. Now an individual term symbol is going to represent an individual electronic state and an electronic state is just going to be any possible electron configuration which has a distinct energy. So a distinct electronic state will have a distinct energy and, or it'll have the same energy as any states it is degenerate with but it represents a specific configuration of electrons and these three quantum numbers tell us about how that electron is configured and these term symbols are going to tell us what kind of transitions are allowed between different electronic states what are the different transitions between energy levels that are allowed and thus what type of spectrum will we observe if we uh, if we absorb or emit photons with a given atom so these three quantum numbers are going to tell us about that electronic state and determine uh, what about that individual atomic spectrum we can expect to see okay so some examples of this based off of the rules that we've got here 
we can have something like no, oh, and then this value uh, which I have here which is this 2s plus 1 <clears throat> this 2s plus 1 is called the multiplicity and that just that is chosen instead of s itself because 2s plus 1 if you have a value of s then you're gonna have 2s plus 1 uh, different electronic states for a given value of s there and that's gonna be how many different peaks are gonna show up in a spectrum uh, transitioning away from that uh, those states into a different uh, energy level. So that's uh, multiplicity, that's a spectroscopy term. So some values which are possible. We can have what is called singlet S0. So if I had 1 and then L equals 0, J equals 0, I would, I would refer to this term as singlet S0. And this would be uh, S equals 0, L equals 0, J equals 0. So kind of the lowest first term you can have. I could have singlet P, and then what values of J are allowed. Um, if I have just S equals 0, then and L equals 1, then only 1 uh, is, going to, is going to be allowed for J. I can have singlet D2, singlet F3, <clears throat> etc. in terms of singlets beyond that. Then I can have what are called doublets. I can have something like, let's see, I could have doublet S, then the only value allowed for J would be 1 half, if you follow these rules here. I could have doublet P, and then doublet P, can S is 1 half, L is 1. So when S is 1 half and L is 1, I can have a value of J, which is either 3 halves or 1 half. Similarly, I can have doublet D, L equals 2, S equals 1 half. In that case, the allowed values of J by these rules would be 3 halves and, oh sorry, 5 halves and 3 halves. So I'll say 3 halves and 5 halves here. Those would be the two allowed values of J for a doublet D state or doublet D term symbol. Okay, then you can go on. We could have triplets, and then higher values of S, you would have quartet, quintet, uh, hextet, and not sure, hextet or sextet, not sure beyond there. Okay, we could have, let's say, triplet P2, triplet P1, triplet P0. All of those would be allowed values of J down here, based off of these rules right here. We could have things like triplet D4, triplet D... Th Wait, no we can't, we can't have that. We can only have triplet D3. My notes are wrong. Okay, triplet D2, triplet D1. Those would be the only three allowed values of J for a triplet D state. Then once you get into quartets, you start getting a lot of things. You can have things like Quartet P. Let's see, we can have quartet P five halves, quartet P three halves, quartet P one half, and then you might think we could have quartet P minus one half, but like you see, you have an absolute value sign here, so you can't go below zero for J. So only three uh, values of J there for a quartet P. Similarly, for a quartet S, you can do uh, the L equals 0 and S equals 3 halves. So you can have quartet S 3 halves, quartet S 1 half, but you can't go below 0 there. And there will be other quartets beyond that. Okay, so what we want to do in the next video is take an individual atom. Let's say like we have a carbon atom, which based off of our uh, electron configuration rules from GenChem would have something like 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. And we want to be able to look at something like this, an electron configuration like this, and we want to be able to go from this to the actual term symbols which are allowed given that type of electron configuration. And then in the next video we'll work through the example to show that if you have a carbon atom in this configuration like this, or any atom really, all that matters is the valence electrons. It's the, the any unfilled uh, shells, any unfilled orbital subshells are going to matter. 1s is filled, 2s is filled, 2p is not completely filled. 
So that is going to give us the opportunity for some uh, diversity in our term symbols. And we'll show that the term symbols you can get for this 2P2 are going to be a singlet D2, triplet P2, triplet P1, triplet P0, and singlet S0. So we'll work through that example on the next video and show how you can go from looking at an individual atom with a given electron configuration and derive what the term symbol should be possible for that given atom in that electron configuration.